Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend DG Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including the Quantum Zone, this, that, or the third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. That's right. It's been a long time, but once again, by popular demand, and by popular, I mean Rob's demand. Yes, it's the time for another third best Southgate. That Rob Southgate show for Rob Southgate by Rob Southgate. Yeah. Starring Rob Southgate. I changed it to just Rob. With a Z. Yeah, Rob with a Z. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix that. Rob Zgate. That's right, kids. Mark his words because there will, he will have plenty. Well, I just noticed that that blue thing with my name like covers up half the screen. So I thought, yeah, I'll shrink Rob it down. Seagate. I'll minimize <laughs> like Phil. <laughs> yeah, because I'm hip hop. We all know that. <laughs> so, hi, Lilith. Hi, Phil. Hi, Robert. It's been okay. a while. That was getting creepy right it's there. That's like nightmare fuel, Phil. Thanks. You're welcome. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So uh, how are you guys doing? It's been a while. It's been, what, like three months, four months? Have we done one this year? Yeah, I don't think we did one this year, actually. Wow. <laughs> actually, we did because we did. I had. Uh, I had oh, yeah, you did plug something this year. Somebody on for, uh, <laughs> I can't remember who I had on with me, for uh, Black Ballad. Yes. And then uh, yes. I think that was the last one we did. Boy, yes. things have been crazy since oh, then. That's your life, though, Rob. I mean, so for, no excuse. I mean, everyone's been crazy. I know. <sighs> I mean, crazy is his middle name, but that's not my with name. <laughs> oh, that has a Z. Yeah, crazy with two Zs. <laughs> crazy, but it mean. starts with a Z. I mean, mm, I mean. Very I guess hip hop. I mean, I guess it's we're there. I mean, Rob, tell everyone what you've been up to, you been and up to? Uh, yeah. how how can you help them, Rob? Oh God, uh, <laughs> that's what everyone else say. Well, I mean, yes, there's all that coaching stuff, but that's actually not the big deal. In fact, oh. Phil, you don't even know. You don't even know what's been going on. Uh, so, how do I even go through this? I've got an NDA too, so I got to be careful. It's like a minefield. Uh, Ooh, juicy. Yeah, you're going to, lo- oh, Lilith, you're going to love all this that's going on. So I can go back to that point when I did Black Ballad and I helped those guys out. Uh, they had originally talked to me about maybe being like a uh, marketing director. And I was, when they first told me about it, I went, that's not the role you're actually telling me. Like you're saying something that doesn't really exist, which is a new media PR and marketing person doesn't really exist you know pr people always say they're doing new media but they throw a bunch of things out of podcasts they don't read them and they never end up on podcasts or they they get on the podcast and they say how many listens it's like okay yeah okay that doesn't work so i got them on a bunch of podcasts i got them on a bunch of twitch shows i made uh lots of friends in those realms that i had not made before which was cool uh, immediately I got hired by another game. So I'm like, oh, I guess I'm doing TTRPGs, which is awesome. Uh, then I got hired for a film, and that was when you had Craig on. You had him on Capes and Lunatics. I got hired for a film for the same thing. I'm like, oh, this is cool. Uh, since then, have I done more of these? Doesn't matter. So Black Ballad is... A, for, with Storytellers Forge. Storytellers Forge is under the umbrella of Four Horsemen Publishing, which is, they're a mid-level publisher uh, about the size of Macmillan. Most people have heard of Macmillan. It's about that same size in distribution. So it's a good size. Well, I <laughs> I was going to interview Val and Erica from Four Horsemen, who I didn't even know who they were. It just said they were part of our Black Ballad team. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to interview them for a new show that I created because you know me, I am not alive. If I'm not creating shows and doing more, uh, crap. Uh, so I, uh, I started one called TTRPG insider to interview people that are doing TTRPGs. And I thought I was interviewing them for that. Turned out it was a meet and greet 
uh, Val is the COO for Four Horsemen. Erica is the CEO. And we're just kind of talking and having a good time. And Erica goes, I'd love for you to, to do this, what you do for my writers. And I went, uh, okay. And I started thinking, like, how is this going to work? Because it, is it just when new books come out? How are we going to work this? And it's going to get really, really expensive for her really fast if we're doing it the way I do the other things. So we set up a meeting. And it didn't even make it a full meeting. It didn't even make it past, hey, let's talk. No, no, I've got an idea, Erica says. Okay. I now feel your pain. You know, when you guys get on the phone with me and it's like, like a, a million miles an hour hodgepodge and it's never to the point until the end. This is my new best friend, Erica. <laughs> She's me. She's me. It's crazy. I get so, so much right. She has this idea. Oh, I do. Uh, she has this idea about doing uh, basically writers things at conventions. That's, that's an easy way to say it. I'm not, that's where I've got the NDA. We're starting to get into the NDA territory here. Ooh. Uh, so basically what we're doing is we're going to be traveling to cons all over the country in the beginning, eventually the world, uh, with this thing that we created. Uh, she said she'd like to get four in the first year. Uh, that was on a Tuesday, right after this phone call, where we kind of said, okay, here's what it is. We kind of mapped it out. And she said, man, if we could get four in the first year, that'd be amazing. And I said, okay. Uh, that was on Tuesday. On Thursday, I had two booked. And she was like, oh, that's how you work. I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah. So do you want me to slow down or what? And so we decided on 10 in the first year. And then I said, I think we have to scale. We're, we haven't even done one yet. Uh, and we now have three teams we can pull from for these uh and it is it, it, it's nuts now we still only have two booked but we're in negotiations on a bunch and one of them i'm super excited about would be like 15 cons in the next year just with one group so i'm gonna be a lot of comic cons and when i do it we do guess what live podcasting and we we are dealing with authors and we do panels and basically they want me to do what i do at panels so like the the legit ones you know when i do let's talk about social media let's talk about how you market a podcast or how you create a podcast and then they want me to do like hosting things and the cons we've been talking to are like great we can use you as a track host on things because you're entertaining and all this i'm like so I'm going to be in a booth. I'm going to be in podcast things. And now they're hiring Maeve. And it even started before that. She said, well, we've got this conflict where we've got one in like Indianapolis and one in Calgary. And the Calgary one's really big. So it has to be you at the big one. And this is next year if, if this all goes to plan. And she goes, I, let's just have Molly run it. Okay, Molly's 16. She'll be 17 at that point. She's like, yeah, she's fine. So we found partners for her for that, uh, which is really weird because it'll probably be Maeve and I in Calgary and Molly doing a completely separate event with these other people. It's so weird. I love how they, they I love how everyone uh, is trust Molly to be on her own more than they trust Rob to be on his <laughs> oh, own. Oh, <laughs> my <laughs> God. Maeve's his handler. Let's all just be honest here. <laughs> that, seriously well they so they came over they were in town for ala and we invited erica and val and uh jen who's the the editor and her husband we invited them over for dinner we're like hey we'll make pulled pork and that way you guys could rest up before the ala conference and uh i was going <laughs> here's a funny story so i get contacted somebody asked if i wanted to go to ala and i'm like sure I look it up. It's 500 bucks a ticket. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'd be happy to go. Uh, all they want me to do, this guy has a booth, and all he wants me to do is have my text open. So if he has to pee, I can come back and sit in the booth for, for 10 minutes. So I'm like, pee boy, right? So I'm like, yeah, sure. The rest of the time I can go network. So I'm like, oh. I need it as a drop, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. Now I've, I, it's turned on. I get, to, I get to just work the con, right? Oh boy. So, oh, Phil, you already saw the fruit of it and you've only seen a bit of the fruit of it. 
because I was sending you contacts. Oh, the contacts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're they're legit. If they haven't gotten back to you, just you wait because they've just started getting back to me. Oh, okay. I've got the right people at DC. I didn't. There was nobody from Marvel there, but DC, Dark Horse, Boom. Uh, well, if it's not Archie, I don't care. You're nobody. Yeah, you know there was no Archie represented there, uh, but yeah, it was it was crazy. The best part was when I walked up to the DC booth and they had featured artists and writers that were going to be there. One of them is a friend of mine, so I walked oh, up and like, boy, oh, here we go, name drop, mark the bingo cards. I'm not going to name, not going to name don't it. Drop the name. Do it. It's, it was Gene Ha who did the the big Wonder Woman uh, ah. book that, that, and they were like really promoted. So I'm like, oh. I know Gene. He's going to be here. Gene's a friend of mine. Name we did not. Kid. We did not meet up. We did not meet up. But it was funny how many name drops I did meet up with. That like I turn a corner, I'm like, oh my god. Uh, everybody, meanwhile, everybody's like, where's Molly? <laughs> I did get that because the first day I saw a bunch of our friends that that didn't know I was there. I was standing behind this guy's booth, and they come by and they're like, "You have a comic? You have a booth?" I'm like, "No, I'm just I'm P boy," and and. Uh, we started talking. What's the first thing then after like making fun of me for being P boy was, well, where's Molly? Is she here? Like where's Maeve? I'm like, I know third best. I got, <laughs> I got it's it. An aptly titled show guys. Aptly titled. Oh, we, oh, we have to make up t-shirts or something just with your picture and third best South gate on it. We have to. Yeah. But nobody's going to buy it unless it has Molly and Maeve on it. <laughs> So yeah, we'll put so, you on the back. Actually, <laughs> that is the that is the thumbnail of what's going on. Uh, I am doing stuff for the publisher. I am doing this con thing, which is crazy. Uh, and it's it's huge, um, and it, there's stuff there that I can't talk about. That's crazy. Uh, oh, I can talk about this. So this week we so with Erica, she's busy, right? Every week we have at least one two to three hour conversation. Okay. She told Maeve when they were out here, she said, I I don't I can't afford more than a 20 minute conversation with anybody. She goes, I I get on the phone with Rob and we go for two to three hours. And she said, and at the end, I'm like, ah, we could have kept going. It's like, no, we've all got to work. Today I had to go, I gotta work. And we're working the whole time we're talking. You it's crazy. But the uh she does two podcasts. What a shock. She has one called Drinking with Authors. It's done 400 episodes. It's really good. She gets good names on there. And then she has another one called Eerie Travels, which is a paranormal podcast. And she had asked me about how to how to up the game on these, right? So I gave her right away. I was like, here, fix this, do this, blah, blah, blah. Uh, consulting stuff. And I thought she was going to try to hire me for consulting on top of everything else. And then she writes me, yesterday no the day before yeah she writes she writes to me i'm trying to think when i did i did yesterday so she wrote to me on monday we were going to have a meeting on tuesday and she said remind me to ask about podcast producers oh god is what she writes i'm like "Uh uh-oh so we get on the phone and she's having issues she's had to get rid of podcast producers she doesn't have the time to edit and do all the shit uh, so I, I said, and it, she had all these things and I was like, it's kind of tied into the consulting I'm, I'm doing for, her. I said, how about if you just let me do it? So I just took over drinking with authors, uh, as executive producer, uh, I've already got episodes up, new artwork, all this shit. She's like, she's like, oh my God, like I'm working so fast. And I said, like this you guys when you drink all that coffee yeah seriously well and you guys know when we started when we were doing like i was like editing 36 shows a week plus i was on 10 <clears throat> like you you bend time phil you do it <clears throat> you bend time and when she said this she goes oh you don't have time to do this you're like the ideal guy to do it and i was like yeah this is like dropping out of my pocket this is nothing took me today I, yesterday i had to work most of the day but i was cleaning up all the stuff the other people had been doing i had to get it back into working order today i just edited it all day because she has so much stuff waiting and they were behind 
So I got an episode posted yesterday. I got an episode that's going up tomorrow. She's going to do two a week. I've got four episodes already done in the can, artwork, everything, so that now I can go and like, how do I tweak this? How do I tweak that? So I'm back to being an executive producer on multiple shows. I do one for another theater too, but that one, all I do is artwork, send it to him. I guess I kind of do the same thing. I don't know. So yeah, my life. It's, it's, uh, boy, I wish I could talk about all this stuff because eventually I'll be able to, and you guys will be like in love with it. It's so awesome. <clears throat> yeah, I know. I, so, uh, yeah, some of the stuff, like the con stuff you were telling me, remember when we talked on the, yes, we talked on the phone. I, I had like a 30, 35 minute drive, uh, drive home from work, and then we were still on the phone. I got home, I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, Phil was P boy on that one. He had to go. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. Yeah. Um, in fact, Phil, uh, yeah. Yeah, we were, I actually was booking people today for Indie PopCon, but you don't have a book to sell. So I, I was like, at first I was like, oh, I should call Phil and he could try this. Then I was like, he doesn't have anything to sell at this one. Well, if we have to write a book, you should, you should take your episode. Okay. Pro tip. We'll, we'll get Kristen or Will to do it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Get him to ghostwrite. Oh Yeah. Get them to go straight. Give them an offer, a couple hundred bucks. They real probably pro real professors. Yes. And you know the other thing you could do. Oh, they'll do it. They'll probably he do it. A class. The other thing you could do with that is you could take because I actually did this. I just haven't edited it down. But I took the interviews from a couple of the shows and I tra I transcribed them. I, I went through a service, transcribed them, started cleaning them up. Now that's where the trick is. But if I'd hired somebody out to do it, it would have been nothing take those those things and do capes and lunatics interviews 2023 oh. yeah you instantly got a book or just uh all the at uh, some of the interviews we've ever done yeah any anything chapter Wait, th chapter three peter david calls charlie a dumbass <laughs> i made a i made one i was starting to make one for live at the blue box where i was taking the interviews mm -hmm. and then excerpts from some of the crazier things that happened and it was really fun, but it wasn't translating quite right. So I don't know what I'm going to do with that yet. Uh, I took the interviews from Alley Chats, and some of those were great. I was like, these are pretty fun. So that'll probably be the first interview book. I'll, I can guarantee there won't be a third best Southgate book. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not going to happen. Oh, come on. Look at how bushy I am. <laughs> I was going to like clean up before Maeve came home from, you know, and I've been here all week. I've like turned into like, you guys watch Umbrella. You're back into the Bachelor. <laughs> oh my God. No, I'm turning into that, the guy from uh, Umbrella Academy. Like, I take my shirt off. It's a full on gorilla. <laughs> did you, uh, did you guys watch that show? What I, I did a little bit of it. Umbrella Academy? Why are you making a face, Phil? I didn't. No, I'm just saying I didn't. I can't, I can't tell if Lilith is making a face. Lilith, did you, not like it? I didn't like the adaptation, no sir. I love, I, I love the comic book itself. It, like they they were too afraid to get really weird, and then like the stuff that they did get weird on was gross. So anyway, I <laughs> I've been watching it finally. I'm in the first season. I think I'm eight episodes in. Oh, I first love it. Season's fine. The second season gets weird. Does it? I love it. I think it's really great. Um, and at the least last at this point, is a catastrophe. Oh no! It's it's like a. Uh, I do like the weird though, because like Doom Patrol, the first season was absolute killer. I loved it. Uh, I still never went back and watched the second season. I think there's three seasons, right? Oh well, they're they're halfway through the fourth, right? And this is the final season. They're halfway through the fourth, and we're just waiting for the second half of the okay final season. Is it, yeah. is it still good? Because that first season was dynamite. I mean, it's okay. Nothing's gonna top the first season, but yeah, it's pretty, still pretty. Yeah, good. I mean, I mean, they've they lose Timothy Dalton partway through, so I mean, you don't have Timothy Dalton for you know. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, it's still good, but yeah, I don't think anything really tops the first that season. Yeah, that first season was yeah. excellent, excellent. I you know I didn't get a chance to watch Swamp Thing, and they disappeared. I'm I like, think I think that might be on Max, isn't no, it? No, I think they took it back off. Oh, did they? Oh, okay. Yeah, it was. It, I. I I was going to watch it uh, when it was on the DC thing and then it disappeared. And then I think it was on max, but it was like a month, yeah. but, but now because of what did he just direct? He just directed something. Uh, he's got a hit right now. 
and I saw an article with him, uh, the director of uh, Swamp Thing, saying, the showrunner, saying uh, now he hopes that because he has this like momentum that they'll let him do the rest of the series because he was not done. And everyone says it's really excellent. So, I mean, I'd be just, but it's better than some of the stuff DC put Wait, in. You know? Are we, I mean, Mark of uh, Hyden, that guy? No. Uh, oh, man. Lilith. Now I got to look it up. Sorry. I am DB. Like, James Wan was like an executive producer or something on that. So I'm just like trying to. Rob Hackett. Okay, let me look. I don't know. <laughs> or Buddy Hackett. I heard he was uh, involved. That's in the chat. In the chat <laughs> what do you guys think of. Um... Okay, Swamp Thing. What do you guys think of. Uh... Wait a minute. Is that it? Of the Timothy Shalomala Ding Dong uh, Wonka trailer. Um. That was a drop. That wasn't Lilith actually crapping her pants. No, actually, no. yeah. I, He's I, way too young. What are we doing? Mark what? Verheiden. I was right. Well, it's like the Aunt May effect. They just keep getting younger. I mean, what if Mark Frodo wasn't understood. so damn problematic, I would have petitioned for it. But I mean, I like Johnny Depp's version better than this one. Not saying oh, a lot. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, the original is uh, the no. greatest. <laughs> and see, this this was interesting. Like they're trying to do like a prequel to that one, but and, and I get it. I want to know. I, they got to show Grandpa because he he was a scammer. That's all I'm saying. If it's not about the grandpa, <laughs> oh, he yeah, jumps but... out of the bed the minute they get the golden ticket. Yeah, he was scamming. He was scamming. Oh, totally. So I wanted about the grandpa. Okay, <laughs> that's the prequel to Willy Willy Wonka. I want. Yeah, I you know I didn't. Uh... I mean, the original one is just the greatest thing. This one, watching that trailer. First of all, I I didn't I thought it feel... was an SNL parody at first. I had to double check. Well, yeah. If you if you think about what you think uh, of Ch Chalamet in a box, is that what you're talking? About? If <laughs> if you if you think about, uh, yeah, I don't know who it was. It's not him either. Uh, if you think about Gene Hackman, Gene Hackman first of all was an amazing actor, and he had a charisma dime charisma yeah and but there it was, was one where thing, but you were still rooting for him because those kids right were little poop heads well and, and he played it really dark mm -hmm. and here chalamet or however you say his name I, i'm like he seems like he's trying to kind of imitate gene wilder but kind of not kind of being himself i just i don't know i it, i i, I would have preferred either full-on gene wilder impression like just go with him younger uh but find somebody with the charisma this wasn't doing it for me and i'm i'm scared because I have hugh grant as an oompa loompa it should be the other way around <laughs> timothy chalamet should be the oompa loompa and, and hugh grant <laughs> should be willy wonka what are we doing uh, and this do... is a christmas release do oh you're totally right him as Willy Wonka, but older, mm -hmm. like he comes back to the factory. Because you know Charlie messed it up listening to his grandpa. You know the, the oh, factory's in ruins. That's the story. I'm, I'm just saying. That's the story. Nobody a calls prequel. Wolf, though. I have tons of screenplays for sale. Who wants the, who wants the prequel? The <laughs> and, you know, they kind of did the prequel stuff in the Johnny Depp one. Exactly. And it's like... I, Which I, nobody saw, by the way. <laughs> well, well, that's the big thing, you know, for the last couple of years. But, you know, they just keep making prequels to stuff. It's like, yeah, let's see what happened now. You know, let's... let's well, that's let's that's the easy way when you're out of ideas. They have nothing. This is what we have to yeah. understand. Like, if Barbie doesn't do well, they have nothing. They have no budget to do Blue Beetle, right? Yeah. Like, this is their answer to Namor. What are you doing? I know you blew all your money on the Flash, but literally, Blue Beetle, Jamie Reyes, is your answer to Namor to get the, the Spanish and Hispanic community on your side, and you're not giving it a marketing budget. Bad look. You're done. Uh, yeah. Aquaman doesn't matter. So, it's just like, what are you Big doing? Big words well, from Lilith. Wow. Well, well are, are oh, they... I can, I can poop on DC Cinematic Universe. Oh, I was wrong. I, I should start a class action lawsuit about how bad the DCEU is. I mean, are they are they just like not even putting in the effort until Superman Legacy? 
until Gun Pretty officially much. starts. Yeah. Pretty much. And that's well, I mean, they're, like, they they're really just dealing blew it with Blue Beetle. Like I said, like I didn't even think it was a real movie because they're just they're just not marketing it. <laughs> No, and actually the marketing has been pretty bad. I, I know that people online were like, oh, it looks cool. I didn't think it looked cool at all, and I think that Blue Beetle's a great character. I just, it wasn't. They're making Susan Sarandon, Susan Sarandon America's favorite stepmom, a bad guy. What are we... Yeah, and I can already see what it's going to do, and it, it, I don't know. Yeah, because it doesn't matter. It's not connected to anything. You have to read your audience now. Everybody's right. trained. If it's not part of the cinematic universe, they don't want it, unfortunately. And that, that is the one thing that Gunn got right when he came in and he said he was starting to clear house a little bit. And he was like, hey, there are going to be different factions here. Like the Batman stuff can be in this Batman universe. It doesn't have to tie into what I'm doing. Pattinson's Batman does not necessarily show up here. Joker does not necessarily show up in the DCEU. DCU is its own pillar. And I, I'm like, that's that's actually a good way to do it, you know? Um, because uh, unless you can really compete with Marvel and the way they've built their thing out, it's just too late for that. They have to do their own right. Thing. Do this other thing, which is really interesting. Uh, I mean, did you guys see that they're cast? They cast a bunch of different DC characters for Superman. Like, see, do you see Nathan yeah. Fillion's going to be Guy Gardner? Yeah. Oh, uh, I mean, Nathan Fillion. We're, we're scraping the bottom of the barrel for nostalgia here. So. Yeah. Yeah. No offense to you Castle fans. Don't at me, but <laughs> I mean I love Nathan Fillion, but they uh they're they're trying to No, he's not the right guy at all. But this, this is like Ryan um, Reynolds being freaking how no, he was supposed to be <laughs> Barry Allen. No. No Right, right, right. It's just bad casting again. Now Ryan Reynolds is just getting Hugh Jackman into that yellow suit fight. <laughs> Yeah, well, like you can sleep with my wife. It's fine. Wow. Right. Ryan Reynolds beat all of it by figuring it out, you know? Yeah. That's um, his heart. And the fact that he's taking the the slights that happened in Wolverine Origins when they, you know, they muted him yeah. and he's he's flipping the whole thing and he's made it so that like that's all you want to see is this. It's like that's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Yeah, I just watched What's oh, I just watched Ant Man finally, uh, Quantumania, and uh, I saw a lot of people kind of busting at it. They are wrong. I had a lot of fun with that movie. Yeah. I mean, if you're going into it for freaking um, Rudd and freaking uh, Lily Evangel uh, Lily Evangel Lily, yeah. yeah, yeah, um, that's not it. You're going in for Michelle Pfeiffer. And oh my god, <laughs> like that's my thing. There cannot be enough Michelle Pfeiffer in that, though. Yeah, I. Yes, love her so much. <laughs> I, I I love her at everything, and Bill Murray was worthless in it. Um, He's in it for like what five minutes. I mean, I, mean, it, I know as everyone... he is post, you know, his Laz Lerman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He he. I was like, eh. but Michelle Pfeiffer was. Oh Not my really. god. Oh they my god. Say She's amazing. Which Ant Man and Wasp we were gonna feature, and that was the trick of it, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> That's right. I I really enjoyed it. I thought that was a lot of fun. Uh, and I I like Modoc kind of threw threw me off a little bit. But what know. did Modoc? Modoc. Okay, I hated Modoc. I thought that looked like crap, crappy CGI, weird yeah. design. Uh, I thought the well, actor Patton Oswald's right there. <laughs> Why <laughs> did they not do Patton Oswald? Probably I mean, because of how seriously, they the actual Modoc show. You know, he probably was like, well. Uh, I don't think because he was an agent of shield. It it would have made more sense. Yeah, it would have. Plus, it, like, why did he turn into Modok? Like, it just I don't know. I don't know. I that mean, was there's a backstory there, but I like even I had to dig for it. I'm like, okay. I think yeah. they, they they just they just wanted a tie to the Ant Man franchise. Right, yeah. right. It was all right. that that part was almost terrible. But then by the end, I actually was okay with Modok. I hated when he premiered. But by the end, I was like, okay, I, the scene when he's dying or whatever, I don't know if he actually dies, um, it looked better, and he was able to do a little bit of acting in there, and I was like, okay, actually, this part's working for me. But, yeah, Modoc, eh. How about, what's his name, that's, like, blowing up his own career? Uh, oh. Kang. So I'm watching it. him, and I was reading about it before, and they're like, this is a real problem for Marvel, and they they saw Jonathan Major's uh, audition and went, this all becomes Kang because he's so good. Is he? Well, did, didn't his accuser re 
recant and is now arrested, though? It's it's no, he he's got a bunch of accusers, though. Well, I mean, people hop on the bandwagon. I mean, I'm just right. saying. Right, and it could it could be fine, but and again, anyway, it's, it's just so much muddy waters. It's like you know, are people yeah, they, lying? They, they, or people they, or the, they the mouse has been off? going untouchable. Okay, so as a stockholder, I I, I know a little bit of the inside facts, and they're they're kind of doing bad. So they haven't really been doing that whole. Well, I knew they weren't really researching people too well when they cast Jeremy Renner. If you know, you know, I'm not here for slander. I'll just right. put allegedly on it. But there's a couple of eyebrow raising people that they have in there and then right. i guess they just got too big for the britches and they really literally just stopped doing basic yeah basic yeah. googles at this point because they're the mouse yeah, no kidding cover it up? so yeah now it's kind of biting them in the butt <laughs> so jonathan majors i mean i liked him in in uh what is it hell county whatever love county lovecraft county oh, lovecraft country okay. uh i he, he's good but i don't think he's like they're acting like he's great I think he's I think he's good, um, but the whole time I'm watching all it, all Marvel actors are they're good enough. So no, there's a good. lot. There are a lot that are actually good. The older uh, ones, not the younger ones. No oh, ones. not the younger ones. No, you're right. Um, except, except Michael B. Jordan is the exception. Well, okay, <laughs> two exceptions: Michael B. Jordan and Haley Steinfeld. In, oh well, in oh, the yes. TV shows, she I was yes. amazing. Yeah, yes. she was so good. Yes. They should have made made a movie with her, Kate Bishop, like. Next project, Kate Bishop, Bishop, because she was awesome. Um, she outacted we're getting Jeremy echo. Renner. <laughs> we'll yeah, we'll, we'll probably, maybe we'll maybe. probably get, we'll probably get Young Avengers. You know, built I, around Haley Steinfeld. I, Disney, look, mark my words on this. You didn't you didn't hear this from me, kids? But mark my words. In the next three years, Disney Plus ain't gonna be around. I can see that. They're they're in a bad way, guys. It, they're in a bad way. It's a cursory well, Google search. If you don't believe this is not me hating on the mouse, not worshiping at the house. Well, no, no, no. This I, is a stockholder, sh- a shareholder, like fact. We are worried. I, yeah. I, I I I saw an article today. Was it Iger was saying? Oh yeah, you know about you know the fo- Marvel lost the focus. Even you know right. That, he was talking about the because uh, Marvel and, and Star stuff. Wars stuff. He's like yeah. the shows are are muddying it. See, the I mean it's not I, an event anymore. It's just not. It's not, but there's also, uh, so that problem is not because of the streaming. That problem is because of COVID. And they tried to market their way out by by throwing it onto Disney Plus, throwing those mm-hmm. movies. And it, it worked somewhat, but it effed it up their, float. but yeah. it effed up their Pixar property. Well, you know, it really they did. They've been trying to kill Pixar for about a decade now. Yeah, and every well, now, like, they'll have two flops and then boom, they'll bounce right back after those right. two flops. That's the cycle for Pixar right now. So they're just like, right. oh, damn you, going red. Damn you. Damn right. you, soul. <laughs> right. So so they actually, I think that, that that's, Iger's saying that's the problem. That is not the problem with Disney+. Plus. The Disney Plus problems, they they are mismanaging, but they're all doing it. They're all mismanaging these streaming things. Like, they all got big. Everybody wants to be cable now. I mean, literally, because they're having ads right now. So everybody wants to be cable. They say, babes, we left cable for you. Right. So if you're going to start this, we're going to see a a spike in people right in the seven seas of of the internet again. When Netflix came and it was all in one place. Wow. Yep. Well, it went well, down, and now it's back up. Surprise, well, it, HBO Max, they start cutting shows like crazy, and you're like, wait like, a minute. Without telling you. I'm like, I'm into this show. You got me. You're getting my money, and you're you're canceling it? Like, what the hell? I, You know, I, I'm finding, we were just having a conversation about this the other day. Like, are we going to start keeping some of these? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's enough that we're watching right now, but at some point, especially now with the, all the strikes going on, they could be in a world of hurt. I am not paying. We're getting to see... reality t- a return of reality TV with a vengeance, and I am yeah. not looking forward to it. I, no. rem- I was there. Don't cite the magic to me. I was there when it was crafted. I, okay. I mean, here's well, how bad I it was. I saw heroes I... die. I saw Lost die. I saw the rise of real housewives. Okay, I was there. <laughs> I watched the littlest groom. That's how bad it was. No, 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 Milf Manor. Oh, it's, whoa! It's Milf the Manor. destruction of society. I didn't ever thought I would be. Damn this like I was my grandma, but oh my god, I finally found a reality show that just literally was like, oh no. Pro tip Sweet kids, baby Jesus, come just cleanse the earth. Please. Don't Google MILF Manor because no matter what you get, you're gonna be sorry it's on your computer. <laughs> you told us. And that's why you need a VPN and an actual incognito browser. 
a giant right. server farm like Lil Fast for her porn. Exactly. Uh, but no, Rob, we were talking and we said uh, out of all the streamers, it's we think like Paramount Plus is probably like shockingly Paramount Plus has their stuff the together. Pack. That's because it's got the Star Trek stuff, but oh, it yeah. is not. It is not pulling together with movies, and it's not pulling yeah, together with enough shows. Yeah, movies is the problem, but their back catalog is amazing. Yeah, they have they have it. MTV, they have Daria, they have all of right. that, and right. then they also have like you know the stuff your dad and your grandpa watch. They got the Sil- Sylvester Stallone show. They got the frick. I'm surprised they haven't offered Chuck Norris a show yet, to be quite honest. Like, and they have Yellowstone with Kevin Cosby. Like, they, they have the whole Yellowstone universe. Yep. They have Rabbit Hole with Keeper Sutherland, my favorite show on the whole thing, uh, on the whole streamer. Um, they they just really like Star when Trek it was CBS New World. Access, I was like, ew, what is this? And now that it's like actually like unified and they've they've figured it out, I I couldn't believe it. I'm like, yeah, I watch more Paramount Plus than I do anything. Yeah, maybe not movies, but TV wise, I think TV they're, wise, yeah, they're yeah, yeah, they're they're well, I just watch a lot right. Star Trek movies too, so you know, it's well, nice yeah. to have it in one place. Yeah, I, I mean, I I do watch a lot of Trek on there, and again, Strange yeah. New Worlds. Oh my god, yeah. So so yeah, um, Paramount Plus, I like. But that was one that my family was debating on getting rid of, even though I'm like, we watch stuff on here all the time. Uh, Disney Plus, there's it, just enough, but I don't... If you don't have I, it bundled with Hulu, Hulu and ESPN, why have it? Right. That's the only reason why yeah. I literally have Disney Plus. I don't remember right. the last time I actually clicked Disney Plus on my remote. I don't. For the for the when the new Marvel show comes up, that's when I'm watching Disney Plus. And again with the bundle, it's like, yeah, Luke is watching ESPN and stuff. That's I have all my all my Disney movies from the vault like any decent nineties kid should. Is is that is that why they did the bundle too? Or are they like trying to oh yeah help oh, yeah. Help, help Disney Plus's numbers? And okay. now that they have the ads that started, you know, and it's cheaper. Um they're, it still hasn't helped actually. But they're where they're screwing up is the content. I mean, everyone gets excited. I can watch all my Disney movies. How many times can you watch Little Mermaid? And How many times what? can you scroll past those terrible remake live action remakes? Yep, yep. <laughs> so, and they bought they bought Fox. And Load they it, it up with Fox movies. Like I can't watch this. Like okay, The Simpsons. It's like thirty seasons. It'll, what, take, 30 it'll seasons take me the rest of my life to watch every episode. But okay. right, but yeah. I feel like it's all content that we've all seen a million times. Yeah. It was event content. Now, I do like the Star Wars shows. I do like the Marvel shows. Uh, they they did get a little heavy with them for a bit there, so I, I can understand why, like, if I was Iger, I wouldn't bite the hand, but I'd say, let's let's pair it back. Let's do, you know, two things a year. But allegedly, Secret and make Mason other stuff. It's not doing well. That's Samuel freaking Jackson. I mean, yeah, but that's, he's the favorite. That's got script problems. Well, yeah. I mean, I haven't watched it. I watched I mean, the first a lot episode. Of shows have on Disney Plus, but that's not my business. Yeah, but when when it gets it right, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, WandaVision. You know? WandaVision was fun, yeah. Uh Loki was fun. Well, Time Authority. When we got to that part, that's I, really I thought Miss Marvel started out really well, but it got too kitty for me and I, I dropped yeah. off. It, it it seemed like it was it was it was a Disney Plus show, guys. It, was, I mean, it really it was. was. It was a kids. Disney show rom com, guys. Yeah, right. it for really kids. was for kids. And I, I'm okay with that. Yeah, but but they number one, they need to differentiate a little bit so we understand what's for what. Uh, number two, they it, they have a content problem, and they they have a mountain of content. That where's, they don't want to release. They bought Fox out of spite, if we're all being honest. They did. But where's look at Hulu? They have FX as like this weird sub network, and they don't they, they really could be making a lot of money from the FX shows, but they well, bury them. They I, bury mean, them. I mean, they, they were don't promote like they, them. Marvel seems like they have a plan, but it was like, did they get like kind of sucker punch when they're you like, have oh, to yeah. bring back Iger? <laughs> oh, well, well, just is, is it just like, oh hey, Robert Downey Jr. is gone, Chris Evans is gone, Scarlett Johansson's gone? It's yeah. Too, but I no, don't know. it. You know, once again, it's the content. So even forget Fox. Where's all that Touchstone stuff? Where's all that stuff that Disney did that was their more adult it's stuff? Technically, Golden Girls are Disney grandmas. Technically. Technically, Pulp Fiction was put up by Miramax, which was exactly. owned by Disney at the time. So it's they want to tec- keep it so advertiser friendly. Yeah, they, um, they, they want to be like the family thing, but it's like, well, it, it don't seem like it's working for you in there, you know. It's, right. How They want to be the family that's thing. that's only in then, America. They but then they have the have Punisher that. on there now, and you're like, yeah. this isn't family. So if you want to promote your, your properties, let's let's make it so that there is 
like maybe a family option that blocks stuff. Yeah. Okay. Like the I thought they had something like kids? that for the for for that Netflix, but then, Netflix stuff. That, you but know, then the give stuff. us give us the Alien movies. Give us those Predator movies. Give us. I mean, geez, think about Fox it has so much stuff. Yeah. Give it to give us. Give me Greg the Bunny, damn it! But don't give me the same nine Star Wars movies every time I turn Disney Plus on. Yeah. Yeah. It makes me nuts. Speaking it, of people uh, doing bad things, so Twitter's imploding and Threads is allegedly winning. So how have you have you checked Threads. Threads yet? No, I haven't seen Threads. It's it's literally a Twitter clone. I it's mean, but, the guys that that started it, didn't? Isn't it? No, this is a purely meta clone. A, a meta what clone. is? Okay, Threads app. What's the, there's one that was started by Threads the, by, the and, no that is uh uh what is it blue skies or whatever yeah blue isn't skies that is the one that was started and then there's another one that was created by two um uh, African American employees that got disrespected and that one is called Spill which is like iOS right now only um yeah there's a lot of drama going on in like the who's gonna be the new Twitter clone uh war it looks like Threads because it has Instagram Instagram. You just transfer everything over, right? Like how they did back in 2014 when they stopped letting you message in uh, in the web browser and made you download the app. Yeah. yeah. That's what they're doing now. Oh, get some traffic, Rob. Start an app, uh, Threads with a Z. <laughs> oh, oh, it's a lot of actual Thread clones that have been getting shut down on the Play Stores. So, oh, really? Oh, mainly because it's not available in the EU because, of course, atrocious, atrocious uh, privacy policy violations left and right. Of course. <laughs> All right, I just signed into Threads. Oh, you didn't use your Instagram, did you? Because if you delete Threads, you delete your Instagram. Shut up. No, seriously. Jeez. Uh, I'm not logged in yet. Does that okay. matter? No, just don't log in. Just don't log in. <laughs> they don't even have a desk site app. I don't think they're ever going to have a desk site app. I think those are definitely going the way of the dinosaur. But I think every app should have a website, a desktop. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm Call nervous about boner. it now. I'm nervous about it now because I started a whole new Instagram and just signed in that way. I I was not connecting my actual two Instagrams to this thing. No freaking way. Well, I didn't. I didn't sign in, but the thing that comes up for accounts is all my Instagram accounts. I could automatically put them on. Yeah, there. it does. That that's that's the beauty. You get to transfer your bio, all the followers that you have. When they sign up, they'll instantly be following you and things like that. Oh, but they man. don't even have direct messaging right now. They rolled it out because Elon rate, uh, cut the cut the post limits, and they were like, "Deploy the threads." <laughs> wow! So this only gives me an option: log in with Instagram. Yeah, you can only you have to have an Instagram account to have threads. That's oh, why can't... it says in the App Store it says um, threads an Instagram app. You can't you can't create it. You can't create an account with like email or anything. No, you have to have an Instagram account. That's how they're pushing this. They're, so they're so people who didn't have Instagram are like, so oh, I want to be a part of Threads, and now they're also increasing uh, their Instagram accounts now. Right? Somebody, somebody, but if I Instagram, so if account. I delete I this though, is it going to dump all my Instagram accounts? Yeah, I, I oh. would. Yeah. So I shouldn't have even. I shouldn't even downloaded it. Well, no, you can download it. Just don't log in. You got him, Lil. Haha. Well, you don't have to use Threads. You don't. Just don't delete it, I guess. You can just have it. Uh, what a nightmare. That is a pro that's, that's a meta product. Come on, let's be serious. Yep, well. The best thing meta ever did, or should I say stole, was Oculus. That's the only thing they have over them. Well, no, yeah. I mean, well, they did ruin um WhatsApp. Now Signal's kind of the premier messaging app. Yeah, yeah. I, I, stand, I, I said what I said. Oculus is the best thing they ever stole. Yeah. So you you were recommending threads, but then no, I... I wasn't I... recommending threads. I was just saying that it's... <laughs> oh, this great new thing. And then Rob downloads it. Don't, don't download it. What? Uh. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it has the potential to kill Twitter and anything that makes Elon Musk uh, uh, you know, yeah. a bigger F-boy, I'm here for it. But I shouldn't, I shouldn't be having the choices of the, the lesser evils, evils of billionaires, you know? Right. I would love. I like. I like Spill. Um, it's just that they don't have an Android. I mean, I have a couple of iOS devices around the house or whatever. But like, oh. I just feel like in the year twenty twenty three, I know it's easier to make the apps for the iOS because you know it's the original app store and everything. But in the year of our Lord twenty twenty three, you need to deploy with both. You just have to. And I think that's why Threads 
because they deploy with both, have, you know, ma there's Mastodon, there's a couple of other ones that every Hive, that kind of always get a little, anytime Twitter does something stupid, they'll get new users, but now it's like, well, most people have Instagram. Instagram had more monthly users than Twitter ever thought about, and Facebook definitely has, I mean, they have it in the billions, yeah. whereas Twitter has it in the millions, so it just makes sense. And I mean, Why need it, billions it, when you can have millions? More like thousands at this point. I mean, but he literally told his users, you? which your, your app depends on ads, right? So you're yeah. cutting the, the amount of ad, ad time by making them get off the app and tell them to go touch grass. What are you doing, babes? What are you doing? I, I we mean, all know I, you 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 uh you didn't want to buy Twitter, but they made you. We understand, but you don't have to ruin it for the rest of us. I mean, yeah, I, right. know, I, I know what you were saying, Lil. It's like you know, it's a uh, stuff with bots and stuff. But it's like I don't, I never get. It's like, oh, here, try our product, but don't use it too much. Well, yeah, it's all about AI scraping. You know, it's like, damn you, damn you, Chat GPT ruining everything. Yeah, no kidding. You know? My, my my a lot of people um uh, on the tech side of uh, where I work are kind of worried um like analytics and things like that. I was like yeah you should be yeah. <laughs> I mean, trust me I was like I work at a ruthless corporation if they can get rid of people they're gonna do it <laughs> for sure well you know the chat GDP thing is interesting I was talking to some uh, a, a, a writer a comic writer and he was like singing the praises of chat GTP and he was like he loves how he can like take an idea oh, and put gosh. it in there. Yeah. Yeah, right. But the problem is, uh, stop it. An actual cor evil corporation from just doing it for themselves and cutting everybody out of the, cause it can do art. Right. There's no regulations on it right now. I mean, that's right. literally why we're in a strike right now. Right. Right. They're talking about the use of AI generation, uh, generated scripts and things like that. And good for them. They need to think about this as, as technology scales. I mean, that's kind of what happened back in 2006 or seven when that first strike happened, right. It was about streaming. Right. About like, you know, and so, yeah, as we move away from actual linear TV and syndication and just everything's going to be streamed, they do need to be compensated on a different basis. for that. I stand with the writers, obviously. <laughs> oh, so do I. Well, yeah. And see, that's just it. The the, the corporate muckety mucks uh, got burned in the music industry when all yeah. that happened. I remember my, my father in law worked for ASCAP and I remember oh. talking about it with him and he it was like a brick wall. Nope. That it'll never catch on. Nobody wants to do that. I'm like, no, you don't understand. I can get any music in the world for free on there, and it's not really regulated. And why would why would anybody pay you a fee? Oh no, it'll never happen. They people do it by the book, and they pay. Otherwise, we dump their booze down the sink. And I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> uh, but that's what the it's exactly it is exactly what we're seeing right now with this strike. Uh, the whoever it was that just came out and said uh that they're gonna starve out the writers did you, you read this no i didn't yeah they said they're gonna starve them out they said we're not gonna negotiate until closer to the holidays when they're now out of money and desperate so they're more willing to negotiate we well, can do like reality people we have yeah reality tv but we have to stand firm like i said like milk manor was my line in the sand get rid of reality tv it's done you you're done I need scripted content. <laughs> it'll it'll never be completely gone because it's so cheap to make, isn't it? You know, more right. than like a script. But technically, and... technically, they do have story editors, so yeah, but it's still cheaper, right? Right. So I don't know. I I'm kind of have my line in the sand, and I mean, I have plenty of backlog content at, at the end of the day, I guess. Where it's going to suck is what I'm getting into with these cons. Uh, part of the thing with SAG, it said that the celebrities are banned from doing conventions. Really. Yeah, which that I think sense. is no, it doesn't, and I'll tell you why. Uh, I'm a member of SAG, or I, I used to be. I've I let it lapse. Uh, long story. Well, actually, you're right. It doesn't make sense because that's pretty much the only way they're going to make money. Right. Because SAG I, well, is the Screen Actors Guild. AFTRA is Federation of Television yeah. and Radio Artists. Right, and they're they're merged. They are not live. So if you're if you're at a theater that is union, it's an equity theater. Mm -hmm. If you're going to a convention, you're not filming. You're not doing any of those things. I don't have to get a SAG waiver to go speak at a panel at a con. Okay? So why do they have the power to tell the celebrities, we won't let you back in if you do this? So I've got, you know, Todd, who yeah. is scheduled to come to Chicago. He's been touring because of Star Trek. He's getting all these uh, cons. And I know he's making some nice cash from it. Yeah. And he's loving it. He's, like, great with fans and everything. Guess what? Done. 
he can't come to Chicago for Fan Expo. And I haven't written with him because I just read this. But they said under the SAG thing, they're not allowed. Celebrities are not allowed to do conventions. Well, oh my god, and that's that BS. A, actual well, SDCC though. Well, what was that? The corporations fighting that too. So that, you know, if they want to try to starve out, starve everyone out there, like, oh yeah, you can't be doing cons. You know, they're gonna keep your. They don't want yeah, but the ones who said it was back SAG. Back. Huh. Why does SAG want to starve them out? They don't well, want to starve probably them out. My, I, yeah, I, I'm not going to speculate. Is there somebody in there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Behind closed doors and right. Hollywood. So but that, that is, is eyebrow raising. And maybe it they'll is. need to fire the, the president of SAG right now. That's, you know. Is it still Melissa? What's her name? Uh, um, yeah, I think so. She's been there forever. I think maybe it's time for, you know, a little yeah. change. <laughs> I think that's just, yeah. well, and, and the, the other part of that was one of the problems I had with SAG when I was in it, uh, number one, I was in both. So I was a rarity, uh, and it was expensive as hell to be in both. Right. If you, it wasn't like I chose to be, it's if you got work in one and then you got work in the other, at some point you're forced to join. I got, I got a lot of SAG work. And then all of a sudden, when I moved to Minneapolis, I started getting AFRA work because I didn't do as much SAG. So I had to join AFRA. And then just as I was getting out, they merged. And I'm like, really? So I paid double the dues on everything. And now you're merged. Bite me. Uh, but, my problem, <laughs> but my problem with it was that... It's different when, needs, though, right? When you're... It was. Now they're, they're all under one umbrella. But when you're... When you're an actor, you're you're perpetually out of work, right? And you need to be able to work your skills. You need to be able to get in things to keep in practice. When you're in SAG, all of a sudden it's like, okay, well, you can't do independent stuff. You can't do anything. You can't do anything that's not SAG approved. And they eventually got to this whole thing with SAG waivers where you could do indie films and that, but they had to be SAG approved, you, you know, and I know that it's union and they're saying, well, that, that protects you, but does it, or does it prevent you from working? It's a fine line. And I know that for me, so I can, I can tell you, so I was, I was in for a long time. And then in 2000, when we moved back to Chicago, I said, I'm done. I'm not acting anymore. Uh, I just let it lapse and I just let it sit there. Right. Uh, no more paying dues. When Molly got back in and all of a sudden I was getting parts, I got a, gotten a film with her that was a SAG waiver. And I got nervous. I'm like, uh Oh, does this mean I have to re up because I'm not Tat Harfley, which is when you're kind of in limbo, uh, or do I have to rejoin? So I called and I talked to him. Uh, they told me that, no, I actually, all I have to do is pay like one month's back dues and the current dues. So it's like 600 bucks and I'm back in, which compared to what it costs to join is a sliver. Okay. Mm -hmm. But to me that whole time, I'm like, you're preventing me from working. So I, I do this SAG, uh, waiver one. If, if it's, if it's categorized as micro budget, uh, you're still paying that much in SAG dues, but you might be getting paid a hundred bucks a day. Yeah. That's bull. That's bull that they have any say in what you're doing. And, and it's also and bull. That's slippery slope with just any union too. Right. So I have a real problem with that, even though I also was very pro SAG because there was a lot of good. The threshold to get insurance in that was terrible though. Everyone's like, oh, God, I'll get in SAG and then I'll get insurance. Yeah, that's kind of like saying I'll, I'll start a podcast and I'll get sponsors. <clears throat> <laughs> well, you know, that's the crazy thing. I, I love the story of uh, my own Bialik and why she, like, went to go work on the Big Bang, right? She She's like, well, I, I just needed insurance. So what's, the, you know, like, one of those things. Seriously. Seriously. Uh, I had a year where I was inching up where I was like, oh, I actually might hit the insurance threshold but then even at that threshold the cost of insurance to you it wasn't just now you got insurance i was still like this is still like cobra prices what the hell and now you guys know why i work a corporate job <laughs> that i hate <laughs> yes yes i am not working a corporate job uh but well i can't talk about it i got i got four dogs to feed rob <laughs> I got two that are sleeping right by me right now, but they're not mine. I got a cat to feed. I mean, come on, $17 a month. That really cuts in. <laughs> that cat's eating good. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I it's it's 
the whole landscape is a mess right now, and I I just don't know what could be possibly be next. Like I I miss old Twitter. Like and we're never gonna get back to that again, no matter how no. hard that we try. Even if Elon decides to sell it to somebody else, it's just the damage is done. Yep. Yep. And that that makes me a little sad. And you know what really stinks about it is, for certain things, Twitter was a really good marketing tool. For certain things. And the news and like how it was being right and and now in certain like, things. I'm using it for TTRPG Insider, even though I'm watching the thing disappear under my feet, uh, because the TTRPG community on there is amazing. But where are they going to go? And and, and and Instagram doesn't. No, you told me not to get threads, no, even though you, I you can get threads, just you just can't delete it for right oh, now. God. Just get threads. Stop being a grandpa. Get threads. It'll be fine. Get off my lawn. Just, just do it. Mm. Do you just have? Do you have a separate account, or do? Or is everything like? Connected? I have two hundred accounts. And yeah, I know, but is it under the main one? You know how they let you do sub accounts or whatever. Yeah, yes. you, don't have, you don't have a Master Doom account. So says Master Doom. No, the way Instagram works, you can only have so many accounts on your phone. Yeah, I know. I, think it's 10. I know. Yeah, I, I thought it was like five, four or five. Oh, it is. That's for you, Apple people. Sorry. Wow. Uh, six. It is six. Yeah, Instagram. I there's things I love about it, and there's things that I'm just like. Well, they, they've returned they, their chronological feed. They've done a lot of. They realize what, like, hey man, we don't need a TikTok phone. That's like right. What we use Instagram for, and they right. kind of repealed some of the other stuff. So they're 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 headed in the right way. They are. They and are. It's great and, for advertising if you into that. So. Yeah. For. For marketing a podcast, it's not great. No, yeah, no, definitely. And not. and Twitter was was actually pretty good for that. Uh, if you use Facebook right, it can be, but Facebook is kind of a cesspool. So I mean, the whole thing is is pretty botched up right now. It's why TikTok got so big because it it had all the hashtags and the trends and all the stuff that well, everybody started it was following. The Wild West for a while now it's it was like overly restrictive and super censored to the point that you have to say corn instead of porn so yeah. which has now filtered over to youtube so it's, it's, it's a whole thing yeah yeah that's a good place to market books and podcasts so you know very active user base uh, very you know engagement driven yeah I, i'm i'm trying to figure out for the ttrpg cool, thing as well way. yeah yeah podcast could be a great marketing tool but you try to work with podcasters yeah, it's Ooh. like wrangling cats, man. Yeah. Oh my god, I keep booking you know people on these shows, but trying to get them to write back, trying to get them to understand basic things like, hey, they come on and they have you know ten thousand followers on Twitter, they'll promote that they were on your show. See, it's good for you. It's for, oh, oh, you're giving them the exposure talk. Okay. Oh my god, you, Rob's going Hollywood, guys. They can't understand that, but that's Rob, a basic. I'll pay you an exposure. <laughs> Yeah, they can't understand it. Uh, they can't understand thinking outside of the box, and that's that's something that isn't that, that the whole thing about being a podcaster, though. It should be. I mean, when you're not like corporate sponsored, you know what I mean. But I I think that that what happens is people start up their podcast, they have their idea, they get all excited, they start doing it, and then they think number one, they either Money. think they're Howard Stern, hey yeah. now, which how many did that to us in our network. Uh, I kept having to have arguments about that. You're not Howard Stern, so shut up. <laughs> um, or they they think I've no, got a viable. Told he, he told you that. <laughs> uh, they've got their. They think they have this like viable product that. Oh, I created this, and it's so precious, and I can't go outside of it because it's so precious. It's like uh, you, you're getting when we, we actually run your numbers. You have about forty followers. You know what I mean. But it's and, their 40 followers, right? Oh, my God. Rob, Rob how dare you not chip off uh, pieces off of those bars of gold you sit on to their <laughs> join, yeah, right. you, join you in your marathon. Come on. Gold press latinum, I tell you. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> These walls, that's pure gold. I, I remember, like, er, early days, like, Charlie thought, like, you had, like, expensive cars. I don't know. He thought you were, like, rolling in dough. I'm like, dude, I'm like, his bathrobe has holes in it, okay? <laughs> Yeah. The bunny slippers have one ear at this point. Yeah. My my purpose with podcasting and what we were trying to do paid off. Absolutely. It, because oh. it number one, it it gave us proof of concept on a lot of things. 
it it positioned me and the position I now am stepping into never would have been possible. But it's a long game, you know, and you have to be oh, yeah. you you have to be willing to adapt and you have to be you know keep thinking about what the next thing is and and how to stay on top of it. Uh, but if you think you're going to get rich off of this, uh, especially you know Rogan, it, you're selling those special I, blue pills. For yeah, games. right. And if blue you think blue chew, blue chew I mean, it is especially you think you're going to make two two cents right away. No, kids, no. Right. Which right. is weird because of what YouTube just did, right? They quote unquote put, potentially lowered the the monetization thresholds by giving all those new tools. But it's like, babes, I don't need super chats if I have five people. Right. I need, that ad, I need that AdSense, babes. What are you doing? You can't fool yeah. me. You can't fool me, Alphabet. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, well, YouTube, when we started there, uh, you it didn't have all those weird thresholds. Like, you could, you could technically start making money with AdSense stuff right away. And, oh, my God, the, the rules are nuts. You know, and everyone that I, I deal with is like, oh, well, when I get to 1,000 followers, I'm going to start making money. Maybe. Yeah, okay. Depending talk on to, your content. Talk to my friends that did did it. They're at about 1,500 followers. They're like, monetized. Uh, I think they've made a total of about $7 in the yeah, past six months. Yeah, if you're months. not into reviewing products and stuff like that, the CPM is pretty low. So you have yep. to, you have to, you, if, I mean, if you're only going to go into YouTube for the money and not just the passion of it at first, you need to do something like that that has a high CPM. If that's right. just what you're into. But if you're going to do something creative, like really creative, you're screwed yeah you know go to vimeo make your videos do your thing i mean you know you might get lucky with a patreon but like yeah youtube ain't paying your bills yeah i'm actually more of the mindset of start a sub stack communicate with your your followers uh raise money when you're going to do something yeah you know and raise it in the right place don't go to seed and spark or someplace like that you know go to the right place and uh and i think you could put something together but you gotta you have to get you, you have, have to have be, your community first. Yeah, and you have to be willing to uh, learn as much as possible. Mm -hmm. That's the big one I get. I'm not a marketer. I don't know. Well, well neither was there's I. There's plenty of books. There's plenty of YouTube channels. Yeah, <laughs> neither was YouTube I. Courses. When we started, I was asking Love, how do I even put a bio on my Twitter? <laughs> and, you know, I yeah, I ended up getting an MBA. I didn't learn most of this stuff there, you know? Uh, I learned a lot yeah, of things. Social media obviously. is a is a life experience for sure. So like when social I, media, like, new new, new media, media marketing, new that is yeah. all completely different. They it's just like you. it just changes so fast they can't teach you. And they it's just like the basics, but not the actual. It's just like PR, you know. There yeah. with PR, uh, people think they can go to school for it, and either and you have tell it or you, you don't. As a former PR person, either you have it or you don't, and you get it, you get burnt out too. It's it's a whole thing. Yeah, yeah. And there, there are things, I mean, if you can, if you can be smart enough to take the time to learn a little something and make yourself vulnerable and say, I don't know, you'll be able to piece these things together. You know, anybody can, but you have to, you have to be in it for the long haul or say, you know what? I don't care about making the money. I want to make this something cool. You know, like I'm with the one I'm helping with, I'm helping so that the, the whole goal right now is to get it. So everything's optimized and maybe we can attract a sponsor to pay for the feed. Exactly. Yeah. If you can do that, be happy. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, I have a couple of magic bullets on that that I uh, have been figuring out. But that's for another show. Ooh. What show would that be? I need a so, gun. So, I mean, we're at the hour marker, so we might as well uh, get some shameless plugs going here. Uh, well, I I just uh, booked an interview with one person. Get this, I I was I guessed it on her show, and uh. <laughs> it was awful because she's like it turned out she was trying to get the like old men of the podcast industry i'm like it's only been 10 years god damn it and then my beard That's showed up time in podcasting Let's then my honest. beard showed up and my bald spot and i went oh ah. she uh, it. yeah yeah my age spots caught up with me uh so anyway it was it was a great conversation i spilled a lot of good tea on how to do this and turns out she's been pretty successful at it and she before she launched her first episode had a sponsor and i said how did you do this and she said oh i'll tell you everything she goes i don't know why people don't do these things and i've had some conversations with her and she's got 
real solid advice. So the episodes we did, she recorded 30 episodes and her hard drive crashed. Oh no. She lost it all. So I've actually been trying to help her recover it. Back up to the cloud, people. Yeah. Or at least an external hard drive. Exactly. I always did external hard drive. Uh, but I mean, what a nightmare, right? Yeah. Uh, and she had some really great interviews in there. And so I kept, I, I, up until recently, I was really trying to help her out with that. And finally she said, I, I I'm going to just cut my losses. And I said, great, have me back on. I've got more to say. Uh, I'll do a couple of episodes, fill up your roster. Uh, but she's going to come on new media lab specifically to talk about how you get a sponsor when you don't have any numbers. And she's like, it's easy. And you know what? She's not far off. And then I found, I have a, a letter, uh, like a template that I think what I'm going to do is adapt it and make it like uh, a loss leader. Send it for my email and you can get this uh, letter. And it's really just a sponsorship reach out letter that you should adapt. If you just use what it says, people are going to get it and be like, I've already seen this, but it's effective and it is not based on numbers. Uh, I just had a conversation with uh, a very high up comic guy with his company and his son was all into what I do and was like, wanted me to meet his dad. And we had this conversation and they brought their marketing buddy on with them. And this guy was definitely threatened, even though I don't know why. Uh, he was challenging me on a lot of stuff. And his big thing was he kept throwing out these terms, which, uh, which are basically numbers, right? How you, you know, what numbers do you have? But he had these terms and I'm like, the hell are these terms and i kept saying i've never heard these and he's like well then how do you call yourself a podcaster if you don't work these things and i'm like dude i've been doing it for 10 years and you know technically i might be the only person with an mba in podcasting i think i'd have heard these terms i figured out what it is the more i thought about it, i'm like i have heard them but not related to podcasting they are terms that marketers use around tiktok nah. and it has to do with uh activity what they do when they're there and how they do it doesn't oh, apply to numbers, basically? Okay, right yeah, but they didn't call it. they don't call it that they have this other weird this and this and i was like i could not figure it out and i wrote to uh i'm gonna name drop dave jackson the school of podcasting <laughs> i wrote to dave and i'm like hey dave i'm talking to this guy I, like while i'm talking to this guy live i write to david i'm like hey man i go do you know these terms am i like off on this and he was like he goes if you don't know these terms and i don't need these terms they're not terms for this and he's like he goes i don't know what you are talking about and i was like okay good enough i figured it out that it was this tiktok thing but it was like what is this that's the problem if you're going to get sponsorship for a podcast and you're going through a marketing barrier you're going to get people that don't understand this you got to start small you go to your for phil you go to your local comic book shop and you tell them hey you could sponsor i'm looking for 20 bucks an episode and i'll do this for you you have a value add i will do this for you i'll social media this and you know if they start talking numbers it's like look i have a small audience but they are passionate. If you're going to reach people, you have a better shot of reaching them through my show than you do something that throws it out to a billion people and they're not the right audience. And is, and then can you also be like, oh, hey, you know, basically I'm giving you free, I'm do, I'll do stuff for you on social media, you know, basically for free, you know, well, not free, but. No, but you do do that. You say, yeah. okay, so like if I was doing it, if I was trying to get a sponsor for Capes and Lunatics, first of all, I'd figure out a sponsor right there that applies so d's nuts i would go for d's nuts and then i so i would write to them i would offer them uh i, I would figure out what my rates are I have maybe three rates 25 dollars to get a mention at the top of the show this episode is brought to you by d's nuts okay <laughs> it's perfect phil it's perfect i i would say 50 bucks for a mid-roll okay whoa and, and I would say 50 bucks for a mid roll. And at that one, we will do uh, two tweets during the week oh. uh, promoting these nuts. Like so saying, little asking Phil, have you, have you washed your nuts with these nuts yet? Perfect. You do one of those and then you do one that you say, Hey, do you guys have like a promotion going and we'll 
sh- will retweet it like, hey, our sponsor is doing this, okay? And then I do like maybe a $75 tier that's like, okay, we'll do a, you're a full sponsor. We'll do a sponsor, you know, this brought to you by at the top. And at the end, we'll do like an ad or we'll do it in the mid roll, whatever you want. And then we'll push you out. We'll put it on our website, like in our show notes. So it's on that part of it. We'll put it on our website and we'll, uh, we'll do it on each of our social media things once a week hmm. during the course of our thing. But you got to sign a three month contract. You can't do month to month. You'll be chasing your tail all the time. Yeah. That's how I do it. And you know what? If you go to small people, they're going to go for it. If you go to big people, they're never going to do it because, well, I want 10,000 downloads an episode. Good luck with that. Yeah. It wasn't conversational commerce, was it? I'm trying to think of a term that somebody would use. No, I'll look it up. I'm not home. I've got it at home. It was nuts to me. Um, yeah. Oh, and I just had another one I was going to tell you, and I lost it. D's nuts. <laughs> yeah, D's nuts. I would go for D's nuts, Phil. <laughs> God, there's a drop, Lil. <laughs> but you know what? I- anyone who does internet sales of something pertaining to what you do, if you found somebody who did, uh, like, not an Etsy shop, but maybe they have their own online store, and they do uh, custom, uh, like, lettering you know those big letters you can buy at the thing oh, Etsy will have these but they'll put comic book prints on them so it's yeah. like decorate your kids room with these comic book prints start them young this is our sponsor for the next three months hmm. that's who i'd go to and you'd say look uh it, it's 25 bucks an episode if they're like yeah that's w- way too rich well what's your budget what what would you know you got to spend money to make money can you do 10 bucks an episode we'll do one episode a week or if you go look we do a ton of episodes I'll do the 25 and I'll throw it across all my shows for three months. Uh, you won't be exclusive. You won't be sp- main sponsor, but we'll throw an ad in there for you. Huh. And the way you start that, that roller coaster to get used to it is start doing promo shares with other podcasts. We used to keep doing it. It's big. And, and with those promo shares, uh, you can also do promo shares for people outside of the podcast world. For example, on TTRPG Insider, I do an ad for Todd's Nerd Circus. I made an ad. I even sang the song that's on it, which you guys should hear. Uh, it's it's funny. Uh, Todd loved it, and he was like, oh, my God, and I did it for free for him. I didn't even – I wasn't going to charge Todd for this, but when you listen to my show, I've had people say they hear Thanks my – for him not giving you a wedgie in high school. Uh <laughs> He would not have given me a, I was a, I was a huge jerk. Uh, nobody was giving me a wedgie. Uh, I wasn't a bully, but I might've been because I was lead alto and I was leading the plays. So I, I probably had an ego about my seat. So no, I wasn't getting wedgies. Yeah. I would have been the guy going like, push you and push you out of the way and be like, screw you. I'm not going to deal with this Go back, uh, until I got around, until I got around sports kids that beat the crap out of me. <laughs> Yeah. In the nerd world, I was the bully. Outside of the nerd world, I was bullied. I was never a bully, to tell you the truth. Please kick me in the pants. I am (laughs) P-Boy. Also, when can we expect a new episode of New Media? I've got... I think I've got seven recorded. No, I think I've got seven recorded. I just recorded a really good one uh, uh, that was all about promos, to tell you the truth. Hmm. Uh, I am probably relaunching, uh, like a regular schedule. I made a schedule for all my shows cause I'm still doing like seven shows, even though we let everybody go. Uh, I'm back to doing a like, star. you're a star. No, seriously not. I would give them all up to people if I could get them to do them. Uh, no, it's, it, I am driven to help people is what it is. Yes. Every one of my shows is about other than enough said, because that one, I'm just having fun with Jack and a little, uh, every that one of my shows, that, right. Uh, every one of my shows is, uh, like TTRPG insider. I take a tabletop game and I interview everybody that I can involved with that game. And I make it game of the month and I feature that game and encourage people to go to their Kickstarter, whether they're a client or not. I don't care. I I'm Do trying play to, the game? uh, these are not launched yet, so I can't play the game. They should send you one, and you and Molly and Maeve should play them. I'm just then saying, I'd, put it then on I'd have to learn. Then I, that's more work than I want to do. Listen, but what the I, fundamentals are almost always the same. 
But Rob I, South State rules do not mix, Little Hellback. Oh, but what I will be doing, what I will be doing, Lil, if you are right, is you can I, take them to us. We'll play them. No problem. Well, I'm going to have them come on and have me, if Molly wants to play, if Mabe wants to play, play with us. But they can run the game, so the game is run the right way for them. That would be fun. Because if I have to read a book and pl- to play their game, I'm going to be in hell. So. You're right, though. Yeah. That kind of interaction stuff is key. But right now, I'm not concerned about that. I just want to help these these tabletop the things. Alley Chats is all about getting the word out for people. Go fund this is all about getting people's the word out for people. You know? And and that's why I reach out to you guys. If I have one that's either a client or somebody that I'm like, hey, like Nakia, she needs help with this. Mm-hmm. I did a live marathon for her the other night. I was supposed to only be on for an hour. I stayed down for six hours. No, I did get out of town. You had enough talk for six hours. Yeah, I was gonna say you could talk that long, Rob. And I had, and it was we had just like great guests. It was like one after the other, lots of fun. Erica came on from Four Horsemen from the publisher, and uh, she's the CEO over there. She comes on. I thought she was gonna be on for twenty minutes. She was there for like two and a half hours, and then she's like, "I got an appointment. I gotta go." It was awesome. Uh, That's what I love to do. I love to help people. So that's where it's at. Very cool. So I'm expect glad to see you're staying busy and out of Maves here. Good yes, <laughs> but I do have I do have a schedule, uh, and going forward, they're going to just be every month. I'm going to have at least two shows on each feed, and I've already got tons of stuff recorded. I've got f- 14 episodes of TTRPG Insider done in the can. Starting next week, they're going to start going Don't like two a week. Don't forget to back up, Rob. <laughs> I've got it in multiple places. So, so yeah, it's, it's cool. And then I do this show when Phil reminds me. I thought you were busy with your empire. Yeah. We, yeah. We're like, we'll, we'll let Rob ask about it. No, man. Write to me. If I can do it, I'm always doing it. I figure I do this once we a month. We could have used the live from ALA, you know, Rob, just saying. A- ALA oh! was, ALA was good. ALA was good. If you just want to film some behind the scenes stuff and just throw it up as a third best off gate too, when you're allowed, we could do that. I'll think about it. I'll be at these cons. Yeah, when I when we do these cons, I can't tell. Like just a travel blog or anything. can't tell you about this. Yeah, you know what? Maybe I will. Maybe I'll start a travel blog. That'd be kind of cool. Do some third best Southgate content. I tried it right in the beginning. I did a couple of things from the car. Uh and then I just kind of forgot about it. But maybe since we're going to be traveling a lot, maybe I'll maybe I'll add that to the mix. Maybe fun. Heck yeah. Heck we'll yeah. Just a, just a clip show. Yeah. I would love, speaking of TTRPG, you know what I would love is if I would play it with you guys too. If we could set up a night where we all went on Twitch. In fact, I, I uh, believe I'm actually taking over a Twitch channel that has 26,000 followers. Uh, yeah, I know. You bought a uh, Twitch channel? Okay, let's not talk about it. But okay. uh, I think I think no, I'm literally you know pirating the whole thing as I tend to do. Uh, but they have twenty six thousand followers, so I'm like, Ooh, there's something I might want to work with. Pirates are. But I think it would be really cool to. I don't know who DM. We'd have to find somebody or GM. Uh, but we could do like the old Marvel game, the old one. Yes. Which I I have the entire TSR catalog for that. Uh, there's lots of good superhero games that are out there, I'm, but that I'm one. I'm gonna request the DC tabletop game. Thank you. I would do that one. <laughs> well, you know, I did that. Did you know I did that for for like two years? Chris and I played at Blue Box. Uh, this guy wrote one. Oh, we could get him to come on and run a game. Yeah, for actually, us. I, I remember us having it's a called, discussion about that. Yeah. It's called. Uh, I was gonna call it Capes and Lunatics. It was called uh, Heroes and Cloaks is our alias. Oh, uh, <laughs> this our was. Pen stuff hideouts and hoodlums <laughs> and oh. it was it was golden age dc so i was the sandman Ooh. uh chris was green lantern but when you start out we were like early in it so he was just as he said he was just green and squishy because he had like no powers so like every time we'd get into a battle he's like oh uh, somebody's got to heal me i'm dead it was over and over it was fantastic uh and then uh the one guy played, it's not Ant-Man. What's the Adam? The Adam. My friend Rich played the Adam. And the whole game, all I did was make fun of him for being so small. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he's like, someday I'm going to fir- figure out how to be big. I'm like, someday I'll be a real boy. Sa- Sandman. Sandman was awesome. I went back and I read some of the comics to figure out things about the Sandman. And I found he had this gun. Well, he had the Sandman gun, right? But he had this weird gun. It was only in a couple of issues, but it shot like a like a, a harpoon or something. And it could be used as a weapon or to, to shoot and climb. And it would retract and he'd scale up. And when I brought that to the group, I said, hey, I found this in the comics. He said, if it's in the comics, you can have it. So I had this awesome weapon. And then I had my Sandman gun, which uh, if you rolled a one, it blew up in your face and you fell asleep. But that sucked. Wait, I don't remember the one from the 70s. I know there's the ones from the 80s and that's the Marvel superheroes. What's the one from the 70s? No, 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 not 70s. Uh, oh, okay. Is it, when is Golden Age? The oh. 40s or whatever? Yeah, this he's is. Saying, no, he's saying the Golden Age characters, not oh, the. Okay. Oh, Golden yeah. Age characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it was, we were, we were essentially the Justice Society. At the end of our campaign, we actually became the Justice Society. And and there was rumors while we were playing. Every once in a while, there's a rumor of this person with Batman superpowers, Batman. which was super oh, Superman. Superman. Okay. Well, we heard rumors. He did not exist in our world. And then Batman was out there. But if you read Sandman, he's essentially Batman. Yeah. So I was essentially Batman. I was a, a you know a billionaire with the gadgets, uh, but I made people fall asleep rather than strike fear into their hearts. Or you know, Batman, them my like favorite battling. character. Or crush them in a recycler. Yes. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Uh, it was great catching up with you, Rob. This was so much fun. I don't know so if anyone's going to care about listening to it, but oh my God, Lil, I can't wait to actually tell you what's going on because it's really exciting. And uh, at the end of the day, I won't have to drive Lyft ever again, I don't think. so. <laughs> oh. He's a mover. He's a shaker. <laughs> No, it's it's the culmination of everything we've done. Oh yeah, you know, and that was that was how our network was. We'd always say it's like all the things we've done in our lives led to this moment. It doesn't mean we're going to make money at it, but it led us to this moment. Finally, we've reached a point where we're like, oh, this could actually Daddy, be this? this could be a life changing money thing, uh, and it looks like it's happening. And well, I think I mean you just told me the smallest fraction of it on the phone, and I was like, Rob, I'm like, you guys are there, you know, you're just, I know, you're getting there, you know, and you're, it's Phil, that was five percent, maybe. Yeah. It's crazy, it's crazy. So thank God. Yeah. You know, thank God. That's what we we need now is uh, is something to crack open because I am tired of nickel and diming i'm tired of going out and selling my toys i'd rather go donate them to a bunch of kids and say here have fun you mean fell in love sure (laughs) oh you guys would have hated it a guy came out and raided my comics because i was going to take pictures for you guys and this guy said hey can i he wanted to come out and he wanted i forget which comic and he came out and he saw my box and he was like hey can i look through he offered me good money i was like i'll take it but i still have a ton I still have like seven boxes of comics, but he kept he kept all those issues of ROM Space Night. <laughs> I do have ROM Space Night. Oh, did you see uh, Marvel's collecting that uh, next year? They're 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 going to uh, reprint and put out all the uh, ROM stuff. Uh, do they get the rights back? They must have, yeah, because they're they're printing it. Because I know they have it. They Marvel for the longest time they could only mention Space Night. They couldn't mention ROM by name, but yeah, they're right. putting out the ROM stuff next year, so they must have gotten the rights back. Well, think, you know, I think they got that and Micronauts back. Yeah. Oh, shut up. Uh-huh. Well, you know, uh, you know, James Gunn in the original uh, Guardians, those were the two things he wanted. He wanted Micronauts and Ron the Space Knight. Uh-huh. And then he should have stuck it out. They didn't now have the rights. I'm stuck in DC. Stuck yeah. in front of him, brothers. Yikes. Yeah. God I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I mean, Peacemaker's awesome, but if everything looks like Peacemaker, it's not going to last. It's like if everything in Marvel was Guardians, which yeah. it kind of became for a little bit, and that's why things kind of slipped. Tiki Watatuki or whatever when he did uh, oh, Love the, and Thunder, Love and Thunder, even, it, it was like Chris Hemsworth didn't like that movie. He screwed up. He screwed up. He he leaned into the comedy because aren't I funny? It's like, well, no. It, you like, needed to take this. Is what we do in the shadows? Calm down. <laughs> yeah, take the serious part. And add the comedy, like the, the the ludicrousness of Thor, and it works beautifully. Hey, look, Jane Foster's dying, but oh, let's get to the next joke. Yeah, oh, oh. 
Yeah. Plus, uh, the God Butcher is such a great character, and they and they had Christian Bale, and it was like he wasn't ominous. It was he was doing oh, his best. Good for you. He was doing his best with what he had there. You know. Yeah. But yeah, Love and Thunder is not great. It's no. not great. No. All right. We, we, we see return to greatness with the Marvels. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Uh, we're not. There's other two carrying Brie Larson on, on their backs. Anyway, oh uh, uh, yeah, before we go, Rob, any other final plugs? Uh, anything people Plug should... Subset. Well, I mean, I'm still coaching and, and consulting, so you can go to southgatesmallbusiness.com and hire me to help you reach your goals and figure out your stuff. I, I have a fabulous client right now that I just... Oh my God. She keeps telling me like, I'm, I've changed her life in these positive ways. I'm not doing it. I'm just helping her see what she already had in front of her. And it's fantastic. Uh, so there's that, uh, you can check out all my shows. Just, uh, follow me at our Southgate or follow at SMG pods on Twitter, uh, Southgate media group on Instagram, wherever, uh, Facebook, I'm on all these things and I sh try to share a lot. I try to share all the different things I'm doing. Uh, if you're into tabletop stuff, I've got TTRPG Insider. I've got Alley Chats where I talk to comic book artists, Alley people. And there's going to be a ton of those coming up. Ton. Uh, I have New Media Lab where we talk business stuff. Uh, I'm forgetting everything else. Whatever. It'll be in the show notes. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Guys cover it. Kick. And everyone, you can go to the website, but the website sucks because I never, I haven't updated it. I was in the middle of an overhaul. I, I created, I finally figured out a way to have a podcast like landing page for episodes that I liked, and I tried to make it so that like anybody, we we could just plug people into it. It would be really cool, but it takes a lot of work to set up the first time. So I set up like four four of our shows. Then I went, eh. But actually, you know what I'm working on? Oh, here's a here's a hot one. This is the last thing, Phil. I promise. Uh, I'm actually working on getting a live 365 radio station running all the old Southgate Media Group stuff. Oh, cool. Lilith, shut up. I can't, I can't, I had that idea, I swear, like a year ago. And you were like, oh, that's stupid. I actually had that idea when we started, but I couldn't get anything to work out. I finally think I figured it Is out. Is it like an internet radio thing or? It's live 365. So yeah, yeah. it's on, it's on the internet, yeah. but now with. I mean, every, everything I'm listening to is off the internet in yeah, my car yeah. and everywhere. So right. who cares? I, I had the thought to just reach out there, all the podcasters we know. It's like, hey, do you want to go in on this with us? And, you know, and just they will basically be a, ro a rotation of everyone's shows playing 360. Well, yeah. I was actually thinking about doing that with Chicago Podcasters Unite, but Ooh. they're podcasters. So highly unmotivated. Uh, <laughs> same, same problem I have with the Southgate Media Group people. When I, you know, I reach out like, hey, everybody, I get Phil responding. You got me and Jesse Jackson responding. I got Jesse responding. <laughs> Uh, and then I'm like, I'm like, you know, here's an opportunity. This is all we have to do. And poof, it's like, okay. Well, bro, so, but I have all that content. So I think I might put it on. And, and, uh, if I do that, the reason it's, I'm dragging my heels is I'm trying to create a schedule for it. So like Tuesdays, two o'clock before the bat Wednesdays, two o'clock flash hour, power hour is still up. Like those those shows, we have a ton of shows. Why not put them on? You know, Sitting and then maybe nothing. Why not? Yeah, and then maybe maybe I could create like a Saturday night, you know, new shit or something. And and if you wanted to stream Capes and Lunatics, just give me the file and we put it up on there. Right. And and you know, so but that's I got so much on my plate. I'm like, I'm gonna wait on that. Oh, I aside from the Twitch channel, I got another one too. Uh, I can't talk about it. Oh my God. I got another thing that is like insane that I was, I guessed it on something. And afterwards she was like, like, you understand this so well, do you want it? And I was like, what do you mean want it? She was like, I'm just going to hand it all over to you. Cause I think you should be doing this. No, but it's yes. cool. So give it time. Yeah. I was going to say, if you get that, that radio channel going, just let me know, man. I, I mean, I'll the record. I mean, we should record some, uh, like pre-recorded intros for shows and stuff. We like, oh, that'd be hey, awesome. Here's an oldie and a goodie, oldie but a goodie from 27. Oh my god, that would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. You could, we could, uh, we could be uh, Rob Southgate and D's nuts, and you could come <laughs> on and be like, 
Hi, everybody. I'm Tease Nuts. Yeah. Do you have the fart sound effects? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, don't you... tempt him. He's always got him at the ready. It's it's the douche from Parks and Rec. Oh, God. <laughs> nice. Robin the douche. Yeah. Hey, welcome to Robin the douche. I'm the douche. Okay, now that just sounds like a family guy bit. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's almost 10. I got to go to bed. I'm getting itchy and tired. Yeah, you don't, uh, don't keep the old man up, Phil. You, gotta you are. <laughs> you are. I'm usually in bed an hour ago. So, all right. Yeah, we're going to close this out. But again, kids, if you're on the uh, fence about, you know, should I reach out to Rob for his wisdom? I'll talk you to your off. The he capes and should. lunatics would not exist without this man. So. I'll talk. I don't, I, don't know if that's a, I don't know if that's a good testimonial or not, but yes, capes and lunatics wouldn't exist without this man. Uh, I love you guys. I'm so happy to be on here. Oh, we love you too, Master Doom. Master Best Doom. Best of all, Master Doom. All right. That's right. Kids, you have to put on that orthopedic uh, bathrobe and go to bed, everyone. The rock star of podcasting, Mr. Rob Southgate. The elder statesman of podcasting. <laughs> Don't drink I'm coffee just sitting and it'll keep him up all night off the pee. I'm just listening to my friend Patrick's music here. It's awesome. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, man. man. That's, that's what draws people in, man. Good, yeah, good. you just you just mentioned the saddest thing in my world. The other night, I had trouble sleeping after coffee. It's like the first time ever. I think I have to cut back 10%. Greatest ally and your worst enemy. It, You know, either that or I got to, maybe I should just work up my tolerance more. I need to do more. I must have coffee. Oh, no. 